the exterminator has become the exterminated. Usually when I'm throwing boogies, it's a whole different thing. Yeah, well, who's laughing now? <laughs> <laughs> My name is Maxwell Adams, and I'm the creator of The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. Uh, the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy is about a surly little girl named Mandy and uh, sort of an idiot boy named Billy who are friends with the Grim Reaper, and they go on all sorts of crazy, magical adventures. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, casting, just, uh, just people come in, people after people after people, and you don't really, at the end of the day, remember who was who, but uh, there were just three really people that really clearly stood out, and uh, that was Gray and Greg and Richard. Death always wins in the end. Greg Eagles uh, does the voice of Grimm. Dying is easy. Comedy is hard. And I went in and auditioned for the part of Grimm. They said they wanted someone to do the Grimm Reaper. So I just came up with this deep voice. Oh, now I'm just dying for revenge. Uh, he was not at all what I was looking for when we were doing it. Uh, Grimm was originally going to be sort of a British Dr. Smith sort of whiny guy. And they said, well, can you do a little something else with it? So I put the little Jamaican thing on it, you know. Fine! If that's the way you want to be! One of the takes Greg did was just full-on Grimm Jamaican like he is today, and... Uh... They liked it. <laughs> and that's how Grimm was born. I don't like mixing business with pleasure, but I'm really going to enjoy this. He sort of came up with a unique angle on it, and I think he really added a lot to the character that way. So ever since then, uh, we've been going like gangbusters. See you on the other side! <laughs> Richard Horvitz is the voice of Billy, and he's uh, he's amazing in his own right. Pew, you smell like a dog's butt. He's may as well just be Billy. He's uh, just on 24 hours a day. I love you. It's okay. Just fill up the space with potpourri. That's what I did with my heart. I want to be just like you someday, Grim. Knocked out. <laughs> How did I end up on the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy? Well, karma. I would say karma. I must have done something wrong. I mean, right. That was a subliminal thought. <laughs> Me smash you! Uh, Mogar and Billy's dad are both played by Richard Horvitz. Mogar! Hey, Billy! Well, the first thing is Mogar, but it's Billy's dad, really. And the father, me, Harold, teaches Billy <laughs> How to be a rock star! And my alter ego, when I'm a rock star, when I'm Harold, my alter ego is Mogar! Well, dudes, stick around for my kazoo solo. <laughs> Remember, Billy, to always stand up and fight for your right to party. So say Mogar! He does a lot more ad-libbing probably than the other guys on the show and uh, just comes up with the most ridiculous things you could think of. I knew that when I was Mandy that I would be expected to know what the show was about. How silly I was. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that certainly a script is an actor's crutch. And uh, if I were to actually put thought into my character, well, that would just ruin the flow of my mediocrity. <laughs> And I knew that as a three-year-old child. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Little did I know that I would go on to be one of the biggest names in VO. Gray Delisle. Sometimes pronounced Delisle. Get out of here! Gray Delisle does the voice of Mandy. Uh, she's amazing in that just literally everything com that comes out of her mouth is, is hilarious and it's pretty much nonstop. Punishment is its own reward. Just go home. You've already lost. Is it weird in here, or is it just you? Because I'm such a bubbly person, so I usually play like very high energy characters. Not all exactly always nice characters, but very high energy. And um, Mandy was so hard for me, but such a challenge. I loved that challenge of just trying to rein in the energy and just have it be more of like laser beam, you know? The Grey is crazy. She's nothing like Mandy at all. Is there a little bit of Mandy inside me? Only if you steal my parking spot, because then I can get really, really dark and very, very evil. 
Mm, I hate being on fire. She just talks, uh, you know, 100 miles an hour, and uh, it's all just sort of weird, insane stories about things that have happened to her. It's payback time. I miss you, but my aim is improving. Who? Maxwell Adams. Maxwell Adams, I I'm trying to remember. Oh, Maxwell Adams, yes. Maxwell Adams is my hero. I love him. I've known him for years and years. He's just a really nice guy. He's very mellow, very down to earth. You know, he wears some wacky outfits sometimes, but other than that, <laughs> he's, he's really cool. We share sort of a goth fashion sense, so we bond on that level. What's it like working with Maxwell Adams and the crew over at the Cartoon Network? Um, I say this in all sincerity, it's probably one of the greatest family dynamics I've worked on on the show. We, you know, we're friendly outside of our record session, our professional uh, relationship. We also have personal relationships. We all hang out together. What I like working with him and our director, Chris Zimmerman, is that they're always open to, like, if we come up with something on the spot, if we improvise something and it works for the show, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll roll with it. Maxwell is a very generous uh, creator of the show. He actually allowed me to write two story outlines for the, uh, for the show. Yeah, he did the outline for Keeper of the Reaper. Uh, which was a fun one. But he's also great about letting us be really creative and bring whatever we, whatever ideas we have to the table. And and he laughs at my jokes. I think there's a little bit of Grimm and, and Billy and Mandy in, in me, I guess. I mean, that's what they say, is that all the characters you come up with are, are just different aspects of yourself. And I sort of see that. How can I describe Billy? A lot of people are fond of calling Billy dumb. He's just completely fun-loving, ridiculous kid. Uh, with not much of a brain. But Billy's not really dumb or stupid. He's, he's innocent. He's naive. Billy is a lot of times sort of the catalyst for all the crazy stuff that happens in the show. The world is Billy's oyster. And so he rushes headlong into whatever uh, problem or challenge is ahead of him and he enjoys it, even if it means, uh, you know, picking his nose. He likes to do that. He can get into almost any sort of situation possible and needs help getting out of it. Grimm is a very cantankerous guy. He's a very powerful, powerful presence. I mean, he's deaf, but he's at the mercy of uh, this little idiot boy, Richard. I mean, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Ah, Richard. Interesting, the name is Billy. Billy, Greg. Not Richard. He's at the, he's at the mercy of this little idiot kid, <laughs> Billy, <laughs> and this little, uh, this dour little humorless girl, Mandy. <laughs> he's sort of, uh, you know, this powerful figure who's sort of just been, you know, captured by these two kids. So while he does sort of, you know, enjoy their company in some ways, he's not ready to admit it. And, uh, you know, he spends a lot of his time thinking about how he can get out of this. I think they're more of a foe for him than any other supernatural presence that he's ever come up with in his particular line of work. So <laughs> he's dealing with something that's totally outside his realm of experience. Mandy is sort of a controlling, mean little girl uh, who always gets her way and never smiles. Mandy's character is um, very dry and sarcastic, and she's just a perfect balance to Billy because he's just super hyperactive and, um, and, and really dim-witted. And you know, she tolerates him. She really cares about him, but she tolerates him. Um, I don't think there's a lot of kids in that town that are willing to hang around with her, and I think Billy might be one of the only ones. <laughs> I don't think he's smart enough to get that she's pure evil. Uh, there's a part of me that would like to be Mandy, just to be that in control of everything, uh, or to be Billy and just to be ridiculous and, and free and not really care. Uh, but I think, really, I'm just more like Grimm, and I'm just sort of surly and beaten down. The recording process is, I really look forward to that, um, because we, um, we all are really good friends. We all get along famously on most days. And you know who I'm talking about. We usually all record together. They try to get everybody to record together as much as possible um, because you can really play off the other actors and you know, hear the, you know, really do some acting rather than just acting in a vacuum. The scripts, which are funnier and funnier, the writing has gotten progressively better as we've gone along. And the element of surprise of going into the studio and not knowing what guest star is going to be working with us that day. I'm very fortunate in that um, uh, Maxwell Adams allows me to improvise a lot of, of my lines and the way I say them. The only good pumpkin is a smashed pumpkin, except that band. I hate those posers. 
and they'll all do a little bit of ad-libbing here and there, so that's nice. But uh, I think the major way that the voice actors sort of add to the show is just, you know, by providing, you know, voices for these characters. And, you know, until somebody speaks the lines, they're just, it's all in your head, so there's no physicality to it. And then, you know, when somebody, when somebody starts speaking the lines, you know, it sort of influences how you see things, and it sort of becomes a little more collaborative from that point on.